everyone. Welcome to the Gachi Guardians devlog number one. I'm Jason Slama, the game director for Gachi Guardians. And today as my guest, I have Mr. Coder Dan, Pixelcraft CEO. You can see our- Hey friends. Is... How you doing, Dan? Good morning, good morning, I'm, sir. I'm doing well, sir. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Kind of excited to start doing this with you. You know, we decided that we wanted to do kind of like a regular vlog at least once a month to keep you guys updated on what we're doing and give you guys a chance to get more involved in the development process, see how it goes. But it's our first call. It's a little exciting. It's a little historic, maybe. Who knows? Maybe we'll be looking it back. It really is. As, you know, like years from now going like, remember when we did that? That's, uh, I hope that day comes. That'll be exciting. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I used to, I saw a couple of your devlogs before, before you joined Pixelcraft Studios, they were, they were fire. So hopefully yeah. we can live up to the anticipation of those. Oh, I'm sure we got it in this, Dan. Let's, let's, let's get it started. Just a quick disclaimer, we're going to be talking a bit about, you know, introductions. We don't really know each other. You know, we want, we want to, to, to answer some of the more, you know, fundamental questions that we have to answer. But if you stay tuned, if you can manage to get through that with us. We do have, you know, some nice spicy visuals later on in the video that we're holding hostage. That's right. So before we get to the spicy stuff later on, I wanted to kind of get people to understand what kind of content we were expecting to do in these types of videos. So we're going to do stuff like showing off assets that we're working on, even in the early concept stages. But we're probably going to show some prototypes that are going on because Gachi Guardians is not going to be a quick, we make it in one month, release it and forget about it product. Right, Dan? That's not what we want. Not at all. We are, we're building, yeah, building a serious game here. Yeah, for serious, a serious game, audience. Serious gamers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, where, 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 where do you want to start? You have, you want to ask me some questions and- Yeah, well, I know, process? I mean, this is actually your first time probably speaking to the Avagachi community since you joined Pixelcraft Studios, so. I did want to give you a little bit of a chance to introduce yourself. For those who don't know your your extensive background in the gaming industry, and then maybe you could talk a little bit about like why you wanted to join Pixelcraft and kind of Web3 gaming in general. Right. I mean, I'll start by, by a little bit of a background. I've been doing game development for a long time, especially for this. 12 years, did a lot of indie stuff beforehand in, in college and even was doing mods way back when StarCraft Editor was released <laughs> like over 20 years ago. And you know, I, I, like, I fell in love with game development and, and at a very young age. And one of the reasons that I'm, I'm quite happy to come here is, is try to get that scrappy attitude back. And I, I do believe that there's something in what I would call like premium indie type game development that, that excites the hell out of me. And I, and I think that Avagachi is like a great, full of potential to, to make some really memorable experiences in that space. And I have to say, I, I, I'm really respectful and excited by what you built here, Dan. I mean, the, the, the DAO is a hell of an accomplishment. I think it's really cool. I think the way that Pixelcraft under your, your guidance uh, involvement with the community and building a community is admirable and I respect it a lot and I, I, I wanted to be part of that experience and see what I what I could bring to it. Cool, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all awesome. your questions. <laughs> I just think, I mean, you probably fell in love with these little guys back here as well the first time you saw them. Is that right? Well, I mean, I know I did. I, I think they're pretty, pretty damn cute. I think they have a lot of potential. Or maybe you like these, the, the guys behind you, the other ones, the other side, the liquidators, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Yeah, I think later we'll, we'll show you the concept stages to modeling of our first liquidator because we're switching to Unity, which is somewhere I've had extensive experience in, and a fun engine to work with. I'm, I'm quite happy to be working in C Sharp again, to be honest. So I don't know, is there is there something else that I missed out that, that you, you think the, the community might want to ask me at this stage? You're kind of their representative, right? Yeah, well, I guess, did yeah, you talked about a little bit about your, because your, what we're building here is a tower defense. So. Um, maybe you oh, could, <laughs> me too, man. I mean, th literally why we're building a tower defense is because we both are tower defense nerds. And yeah. I, I, for, for me, personally, I played all the Warcraft three tower defenses out there. Um, I think my I favorites were, too. <laughs> you, you made, you probably made some I of the I tried to make I them. Playing. I didn't make anything super memorable that right. you probably played, but I remember like, oh, I have to do this. It's fun. It's a, such a, such a cool, uh, game genre. So that's why. Kind of when we were talking about what what were the first types of games we wanted to make on Avagachi, and shout outs to, I think it was Jared. He's one of the one of our community members. 
he actually made the first Avagachi tower defense and it was actually a really fun game. And I, I wish he'd taken it further, but you know, we're going to take it further Yeah. and we're going to make the, a really, really cool tower defense survival game based on Avagachi. Maybe you yeah. can talk a little bit about yeah. what this game, what is Gachi Guardians? I, th I think there's, there was even a question of like, what the hell is Gachi Guardians? What is a survival yeah. tower defense? I think there's a lot of directions we could have went with it, but a few, a few points to summarize. I don't want to go into too much detail in this first vlog, although expect us to really hammer it out as we go further in the process. I wanted to create something that I would call a free for all competitive tower defense. And I really wanted to bring the gachi into the center of the experience and not just be like a pawn, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a soldier in the thing. I want it to be like a training ground where your gachi is trying to prove that he's got what it takes to be a gachi guardian. And so instead of the enemies trying to reach the end of the map, even though the maps might look familiar to tower defenses, the enemies, the liquidators, the, those licking bastards, are going to go straight after your avagachi and try to kill it so each player will have their own copy of the level so they don't actually have to stab each other in the back or hide in one corner while the other avagachi does all the work no 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 you have to you have to survive all those liquidators yourself but you know you, you the ultimate thing that will happen seven out of eight players in the match will die their gachis will die because the last surviving gachi is the winner you know You'll be able to purchase items, and I'm not talking about NFTs, I'm talking about like match stuff to make your gachi stronger in that specific match. Uh, to upgrade and unlock abilities or do traditional stuff that you would see in the old mod games, you know, like an infernal cloak type item. You'll be able to build and upgrade towers to aid your avagachi in fighting it. And, you know, I, I think we'll have a little spoiler later on. We're not doing towers in the way that you might expect, but, you know, they are stationary buildings that deal damage to the enemy so i guess the the, the towers word is appropriate but, but i did have not medieval we're not going this. medieval here no we're not we're going, going medieval on their asses and the, and the and the fun thing is that the main way to make money the you know killing liquidators will be a part of it but the main way will be through every wave you'll get money and the amount of money you'll get will be depending on how much you've invested into the liquidators so you'll have to kind of play this balancing game mm. between do I upgrade my Avogachi? Do I upgrade my tower so that I don't die? But do I upgrade the enemies so I have enough money to upgrade the tower to the Avogachi so I don't die? And it's going to be this kind of weird dynamic between the eight players of, you know, who's over-investing into the liquidators and kind of trying to screw everyone over but dying to their own creations. <laughs> or, you know, it's going to create, I think, a lot of memorable dynamics between eight players. Uh, what's going to happen there because uh, you so have to fight the ones that you summon too that that's right so you, you you add that extra liquidator into the spotting pool or you upgrade that guy into super mode super saiyan liquidator mode you got to fight it you got to kill it every round for the rest of the match right so these upgrades every round up. interesting yeah we wanted to avoid like this you know you have to spam the spawn enemy button but still kind of wanted that old classic Tower Wars type feeling where you're you're influencing the enemies as well and being rewarded for it. So a lot of inspiration from a lot of different tower defense genres is going into the design, including some inspiration from, let's call them not tower defense games, but still in, in the more casual market where you know, like the last man standing is, is not necessarily a tower defense trope, but it has been successfully executed in, in several other games. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to see it all come together and so on the road. So what's how many players do you think will be playing together in one? Like, what's the max number of players? It's going to be eight. And I think earlier on, we'll be able to just simulate AIs for any players that can't come in. But I, I think the full experience and will be sort of having those eight players. We're going to have like a little nice leader, leaderboard on the side with your actual Avogachi avatar animating, you know, waving, getting angry, getting hit, and kind of seeing uh, who's uh, got the most uh, health. And it's like a little competitive atmosphere. Maybe you'll go spy on, on what your opponent is doing and kind of see where his weaknesses and his defenses are. We'll get more into that in a future devlog when, when we reveal a bit more of the level design, but the, the stuff we're working on is pretty exciting, I have to say. Cool. So, you know, the goal of the game, don't get licked. You don't gotta licked. <laughs> kill the liquidators without, without yourself dying. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that sounds really fun, actually. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of don't get licked, I think it wouldn't be a great avagachi game if the first you know liquidator that we designed wouldn't have what i would nickname him as the liquor 
So we took, you know, this guy. Uh, this little guy. <laughs> community will remember this little guy. And, uh, you know, we didn't say it much earlier, but we are bringing everything into 3D, into Unity, which means we're not just going to use this 2D asset. We actually have to bring this guy to 3D. But, you know, how? How do you bring this mm. guy? So, you know, we, we, we had in, internally uh, our other game director wow. create this nice image you see in the background i kind of took a, a higher stuff of how he brought sort of one of the liquidators to life and kind of really experimented in the shapes of liquidators in really fun ways but again this was something that was done quickly for like a, a promotional material for you guys it wasn't like properly uh, rigged or meshed or really explored what it could be so so this is the v1 of the 3d liquidator right here this, is, this is you know that with the little guy in the corner and this guy we're kind of like okay how do we bring this yeah. guy further into a liquidator that you can imagine running up to your Avagachi and just giving you a good old lick. You know, stunning a tower with a little, little yeah, we're gonna have so uh, much that, fun with the visuals, guys. <laughs> that's one thing you didn't mention a second ago, is that, that the towers, this is another kind of interesting aspect, is that the towers can also be licked, not just yeah, the, the Avagachis. Not just the Avagachi, the, the liquidator will be able to go stun the towers. I don't want towers to be destroyed, but stun it with a good mm. old fashioned licking. <laughs> awesome. So we went to some concept artists and we said, okay, what, 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 what can you give us? What sort of exploration we can do to kind of take this guy to the further level? And while they, they sort of definitely delivered on the exploration side, I mean, we, we've got floating brains, <laughs> I don't know, this cube thing, you know, the hearts, and, but you know, we, we decided to stick with the, with the direction of one because that felt like it was a lot closer to that original 2D sprite thing. But, you know, we really wanted to upgrade it. First of all, I didn't want those Beetlejuice legs, you know, that sort of pattern. I wanted to get a bit more of a right. mechanical feel in there. I felt like the brain was pretty empty. You know, the tongue needed to be figured out. Like, how, what is the tongue coming out of, you know? And so, you know, I asked him to think about with the brain. I mean, there was like a lava lamp type ideas going out there. Some there hearts. <laughs> some, some hearts floating out of it, okay not super interesting and then we kind of started playing what kind of emotions could we show with the liquidator because i really mm. want to bring these guys to life and we ended up with like grucho marx type eyebrows that were like come on do we really want to grucho marx these liquidators maybe that's taking it a bit too far so you know we started exploring how else could we do facials and we kind of went more of this mechanical uh, electric type brain situation but then how did the cables and the top kind of fit in when we do that and you know, uh, maybe the tongue is a little bit too short. We're kind of we're on chestnut cracker type feeling. And I, I remember you were sending feedback like, it looks like an old man that has no teeth. Yeah, I right. look like before, uh, before you added that in, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we still have the old man here. We're still kind of, experiment. yeah, but now we're looking at Especially when it here. closes its mouth, the bottom left yeah. one there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, kind of playing with, with how we could do eyes, but you know, now I'm like, why does he have the giant forehead of doom? Can we can we maybe bring that down and maybe bring back some of the original colors? Now you can see we added in some teeth, you know, we refine that head. You know, I, I think the bottom left one looks angry. I think he's he's ready to get us, you know. And definitely that top right one is surprised and you know, some of them are confused or I, I think one is rolling his eyes in the bottom right. So Yeah, I think yeah. Looks like there's that. a lot of fun you can have despite having this weird eyes all around your head and, and I think it kind of adds a lot of character to the liquidator. And so we've we've reached the stage now where we've three D modeled it. So this is the, the first rendering of the three D uh, liquidator. What he looks That's like. super cool. Now comes the crazy challenge of rigging it animating it adding the effects putting all the emotions how do we get the tongue out and, and really bring it to life but you know we're making progress on bringing our first liquidator to life it looks I, lo I love that we we kept like the kind of one one thing i love about the original liquidator is that like it's really dangerous but it's it's always smiling it's like yep <laughs> i'm gonna kill you <laughs> So I love that this guy also maintained that. It, it, it looks I'm gonna uh, kill you and I'm gonna smile while doing it. <laughs> That's one of the yeah, I love that. <laughs> how how so, do you think that these are going to move? Are they gonna walk on their legs or are they gonna kinda so hover around? I there, there was a moment where I'm like, it would be cool if these walked around a bit more like let's say the Doctor <sighs> Octopus from Spider Man. But uh, I think we're looking at the development costs and the complexity with that kind of animation. And we decided that it wasn't super necessary, so I think they're going to float a bit more like the, the enemies in the Matrix. You know those drones with the tentacles in the back? Right. Okay, maybe not, they don't look the same, so it's not going to be the exact same thing, but they're going to be kind of floating and the tentacles will drag back. And just like that image that we saw earlier, they'll be able to just grab out and do some really cool looking attacks because 
They're not just lickers. They're they're also going to be hurting your avogachi, not just you know licking it to love. To love. Yeah, they got <laughs> some claws. So you know that's that's one of the bigger progresses that we've made so far that I really want to show off because we've really reached a, 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 a far milestone on it. And you know it's it's a lot of work to to, to create these assets in three D and, and you know we don't want to rush it. We want to create what I would call like a premium Avogachi experience and take the time that's necessary to make something that is both fun but also memorable and kind of sets the quality bar at a higher level than we've yeah. previously done, especially in 3D. You know, it's, it's, it's super yeah, easy it's to make easy. ugly 3D. It's super yeah. easy to make ugly 3D. But bringing it all to life is, is, is hard work, but we're, we're dedicated to creating something very memorable. And that was the big thing that I wanted to share for the first devlog. Again, I just joined not that long ago, right? We're just getting started here. There's... You're in like your about your second month, I guess, that, yeah. that you've been with Pixel Craft. Time I'm flies, but yeah. yeah. And honestly, I mean, you're being you're being kind of holding holding the the cards close here because you've done a ton. This is really we're only scratching the surface, but we'll we're gonna we'll we'll have plenty more of these devlogs with well, even cooler I'm updates a, but. i'm a rightful bastard and i don't like to show things <laughs> until i'm I'm absolutely happy and perfect with them but there, there's so much happening which you know we're trying to build a proper team to really ramp up production in unity as well uh, we've done a lot of prototyping but there's a big difference between prototyping and making a game that's not going to crash every five minutes or that it cripples us trying to update it so you know we have to take it a little bit slow in the beginning to make sure we're making the right decisions and building things the right way but i think once we get you know a couple of months down the road and we've really started to polish out our core systems the progress of things we'll be able to show you will speed up significantly and i think we could share before we we close up here that we're aiming hoping praying to by the end of summer have some sort of internal tests test versions and alpha if you will that you know, those who are lucky enough to sign up and get to the accepted can play with us and give us our feedback and tell us what you think about the direction we're going because we really want your feedback as early mm -hmm. as possible into the development process, right? I know that's important to you, Dad, right? Totally, yeah. We, I mean, we've always, like, with everything Avogachi, it's always been, we get something to a point where it's playable where, and we're, we think it's worth sharing with the community and then we, we let everyone try it out. Uh, and I don't think we'll be changing anything <laughs> with that process here with uh, with Gachi Guardians. It's just we want to get it a little bit further than just like totally, you know, a super ugly demo. We want to get a little bit, a little bit of the aesthetics out there before we share it. But yeah, we'll. I, I'm I'm pretty confident that under your leadership and with what we've gotten so far, we should have something for the community to start playing uh, at least yeah, demoing sooner, sooner rather than later, and then. Kind of add more information i don't think this was actually asked in your twitter poll but i think it's, it's it's something that we can't gloss over our main platform goal right now is webgl so it's super accessible in the way that we've traditionally done stuff um, although we do hope to by sometime next year or maybe second half i don't know also release on mobile devices is, is something that i'm really aiming for we'll see totally. we'll see what's in the cards but uh, i want i want avogachis to be a big thing i think they have that potential to have you know so many people fall in love with them. I think tower defense genre is just bursting at the seams, waiting for a challenger to come in and then take over and, and show that you know tower defense genres have a huge future, and that's what we're aiming for, right, Jim? Exactly. Like I think I was looking either this week, like at the tower defense games out there, and honestly, there hasn't been a big challenger in this space for a while. So I'm thinking this is a great opportunity for Web3 games to to take that mantle. And uh, yeah, we're we're gonna try our best. We're gonna do it. So do you wanna you wanna switch to the questions and sort of wrap this up or is wait 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 you mentioned before? what oh, happened right. to the, the alpha? All oh, right, I had I had more stuff prepared. You're right. Thanks thanks for that. I have a few more last teases of concepts that we've been working on. The first thing that I have ready for you guys today is sort of a what do we call a beautiful corner of what the map could look like. Again, we're exploring shapes. I'm going for this like matrix style feel where within the gachi verse it's kind of loaded in this level and this mesh you know trying to find that feeling where it has more toned down colors a little bit than maybe what we're used to in avogachi so it doesn't make your eyes bleed as much but still keeping that gachi punks you know it, it's it's it, it is a digital world you know it's it's a loaded matrix program it's yep. it's got a little bit of elements that, that keep you there and then and, and that's 
that's been challenging, but I'm really excited with the sort of direction that we're heading in right now. Uh, I hope you like it. That's the word, gotcha <laughs> punk. That's the <laughs> that's the style. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of yeah a lot of cool stuff in that in that style as we evolve here. But I'm looking at I'm looking. What is that little? Is that a raffle on the yeah. on a lily pad there, kind of chilling? Yeah, one, one of my original on original tower designs. Uh, <laughs> is that a tower? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I said earlier. Towers and quotation marks. I'm like, you know, chain lightning. Towers. That's a cool effect. But who needs lightning when you can have a raffle jumping around on enemies' heads, bumping into them like Mario <laughs> on Goombas? You know, doop, and doop, doop, doop. <laughs> You know, you upgrade it, it bounce more, you do ultimate upgrade, you get your King Raffle, who just keeps bouncing on the same guy until he's dead. I think there's going to be a lot of fun we can have with this. And if you'll notice, we added in a little googly eyes in the water. Well, what happens after after your Raffle goes flying in the air? Well, another Raffle jumps out of the pond onto the leaf, ready to, to follow suit into the battlefield. We're really looking to, to nail the details and, and create an experience that's full of memorable stuff that people can fall in love with and i think this was a great first tower design that we've done uh, i'm really excited to seeing it come to life and seeing the frogs jumping from enemy to enemy i'm just imagining i guess that lily pad yeah here we go that when that lily pad it's gonna spring out and yeah you can, can we see, zoom in on the he's not, he's not so bored i know i can't zoom in now but he's not so bored when he's flying through the air it's like oh shit, what just happened i was just ah! chillaxing on this leaf and now i got launched and you know, we're kind of playing with the digital loadings. You know, we want to we want to make memorable building animations, not just you know stones building one on top of each other, creating a tower. No, these are, these are little programs being loaded in to your side to help you fight. So, name of the game is going to be just really fun visual as well as gameplay mechanics to kind of create a pretty memorable experience. I hope. Yeah, like we love this. We love these gachis. We love all the. All the different stuff in the Gachi verse and and our just this IP that we've created and I want people to fall in love with it. Like that's that's the goal of this game is it's a fun tower defense. We also want it to just be really beautiful and it's like a a, a great visual experience. So, Raffle I mean, Towers, man. Part, part of the challenge <laughs> and it's it's it, it is a hell of a challenge is how do we bring the Avagachis that we have into 3D? How do we make the collaterals? make the Avogachis really stand out. I mean, I had to spend the first few weeks really digging down to, to understand how the Avogachis were really built so that we can create the assets in the right way that we support everything. Our current priority right now is to kind of explore Ooh. and figure out what kind of way we bring the eyes into 3D. We went with a bit more of a gem spiritual effect because just straight normal shapes don't translate into eyes. We're playing with these nice outline type shaders similar to the games like Borderlands have done to just create this nice edge with a glow effect to give them that little bit of spookiness is what I'm aiming for right now. We'll see they are ghosts. Goes. Yeah. They are ghosts. They're maybe digital, but they are ghosts, my friend. And you know, in in addition to that, we really want them to animate. I I I don't want them to just move very stiffly. I want them to feel a little bit like a drape over you know, like, like when I play with my kids, they put a sheet on me and I move around and, you know, the, the, there's a trail. So that the, you know, the bottom of the Avogachi trails a little bit when you're moving, that the arms move. And I think the other thing we're really trying to pull off right now is that the Avogachi can actually have all the facial expressions in 3D, right? How do you make him, well, smile we've got. How do you make him sad, angry, ah, charging, sticking his tongue out. And it feel and look really nice without losing that spirit of what made the 2D Avogachi so great. That and little I, pixel mouth, yeah. Yeah, I'm also looking at the, doing proper lip syncing so that they can talk. We want we want them to be able to speak if, if well. So Honestly, like, like next the next dev call, I, or this like next dev log, I wanna be as my Avogachi. Like that's that's our goal, to be able to actually do these calls as an Avogachi. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really fun, and I think that's a future we can look forward to. Right now, our priority is to get all the collaterals, all the eyes into the 3D process, as well as probably one, at least one wearable to kind of test how does the glow work in a wearable? How do we make wearables? But again, it's 3D, right? In 2D, you just render above it and everything's yeah. fine. Now we can have meshes going through each other and, you know, it's a bit trickier. And, you know, we were starting to mass produce wearables in 3D very quickly, but the meshes weren't done in a super optimized way or they weren't necessarily reaching a level of quality that we thought was 
as far as we could take it. So I think what we want to do is really figure out the pipeline, create really amazing assets that will live through time, and then make sure that we produce all the wearables that currently exist in a level of quality that does them justice, right? I don't want a godlike yeah. to feel like it's something some guy did in the basement over a week. No, I want it to look like a godlike item, right? And, you know, there's, there's lots of ideas I think we both like to really bring the godlikes forward. We'll see how far we're able to push it because it is a lot of wearables to make. I mean, and there, some of them, it's like, a, it's like a piece of hair, right? Some of these things, it's like, <laughs> They don't, they're not necessarily traditional godlike that you would think in a, in a game where they, they're super, you know, big or imposing. In some cases, it's like a, a beard or, or a pair of oh, eyes. That's, I love the god beard. Yeah. So it's a challenge for sure, but we're, we're up for it. So you know, really it's going to take us a little bit more time than, than maybe you'd like, but we will get there. That's a, that's a promise. But not only will we get there, we'll get there in a way where you'll be like, damn, I'm happy that exists, right? And and I think it'll be great for Ever Gachi Gaming as a whole, not just Gachi Guardians, to get 3D Gachis right, to set the bar right. So that, you know, when you're playing an Ever Gachi experience in 3D, you know it looks good, you know it it feels on par, right, with everything else. And to me, that's that's paramount. Yeah. We, we can't do any less. I mean, as as gaming goes everything's going 3d Every, there's the metaverse even if it is you know whether or not it exists or not i think it does but uh, you know it's gonna be a status symbol to have like a really really dope looking 3d avatar that doesn't like th what i love about avagashis is like they don't look like anything else out there they they're not like they're not human they're not like normal kawaii things that you see they're not penguins they're, they're ghosts so it's really they're really unique and they're gonna play a big role i think in in the metaverse as we i'm, as, I'm gonna lose my shit when through. someone puts them in a movie you know like yeah where it's all like cultural <laughs> references you know you've got sonic you've got mario and then you've got an avagachi standing next to it and that you know like a ready player one type movie and you're like holy shit they got that potential totally yeah right i, I see they're that. so iconic so yeah <laughs> All right. Dan, well, cool. That, I think we gotta wrap got this up. Yeah. Did um, you? Did we, I think we have a couple questions. I put out that nice tweet the other day, yeah. and we did get some good questions from from the community here. Uh, we can just run through those, and then we'll and then we'll wrap this up. Yeah, we'll try to do that really quickly because this has been a long video. So thank you guys for sticking with us up to this point. I'll be asking the questions as much as I can, and Dan answering just to give myself a little bit of a break. So from Mr. Slick Gachi. Uh, what existing game would be most comparable to GG mm. gameplay? I think we've been through that one a little bit. We've explained a bit more. It's inspired from a lot of different tower defenses, but also other other games that have, let's say, more of a battle royale type feel to them. And uh, maybe more of a question for you, Dan, is will a wallet connection be required or is mass free to play going to be available? Or both? Yeah, I think, I think both because Gothic Guardians is the game that we we anticipate will help us reach gamers that that you know first of all they might not even be web3 gamers and even if they are maybe they've never heard of avagachi so there's got to be a way for them to play this game fall in love with avagachis fall in love with the art the community the gameplay and then you know if they want to adopt their own avagachi down the line they're 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 happy to do that but we really believe that there's got to be a, a mass free-to-play option for for this to really get big. And so that's definitely going to be part of the experience. Right, especially, you know, to kind of avoid having to, let's say, make more portals right now to get people in. We don't want that at all. Yeah, no one, no one at this point, you know, no one wants Haunt 3 or no one wants more than 25,000 Avogachis. Like, we, we want to pretty much keep to that, but also have ways to onboard new players without them having to go and pay a bunch of money in the bazaar because that's frankly it's kind of a, a difficult experience to onboard people that way so for a yeah, game it's, it's, it's you know you gotta have free to play you know? and then sort of in that same vein elaborating from at data flows how do you see gachi guardians fitting in with the rest of the avagachi protocol long term what future integrations can we look forward to that won't be in an initial release yeah so the reason we created Gachi Guardians is because we do feel that there is a, a a niche that we should be filling 
in the Amagachi kind of ecosystem in that it is a kind of a game with wider mass appeal in, a, in an established category. So we chose tower defense because that's what we, we love and have a lot of experience making. And so I see, yeah, I see that Avagachi, uh, that Gachi Guardians is going to be kind of like the flagship game for not only Avagachi, for Gachi Chain when it, when it launches. And that that's going to lead, uh, that's going to become like this model for other people, other studios, other indie developers who are looking at Avagachi. And they're like, you know what? Like that Gachi Guardians game is, is pretty dope. I think, I think. I want to do something like that and maybe i'm going to make a racing game or i'm going to make like a platformer uh yeah, that's you know the dream, or something. Isn't it? That's, that's, I, I hear you saying that all the time that's really the dream is to, to, to open it up for more people and kind of use it as a springboard and i mean kind of following up on, on the same vein we have at tim time who asks if others are looking to create experiences on gotcha chain how can other world game builders get their hands on our 3d gotchas in unity will they be open source and I, and I'll take this one, you know, I think Daniel will remember like within my first week or something there, I'm like, we got to make like a, a Gachi or an Avagachi SDK that kind of gives everyone access to all these 3D liquidators, 3D Avagachis, these assets that we're making so that the community can make their own games at the level of quality that we're setting as easily as possible. The, the only challenge with that is, you know, before we can really entertain how we make something like an Avagachi SDK, we need to get like something built at the quality level that we want to set functioning mm -hmm. work out the kinks make sure the assets are actually there right like all the wearables are made and stuff and then look at what we have and say okay this is the best way to distribute it this is the best way for other people to do it and then share it so i think it'll be a little bit of time after we we, we get more advanced in gacha guardians before this could happen but I, I i would say very strongly it's in like our blood that we want this to be as open source as possible right yeah, they're, they're, there's definitely going to be the open source SDK and then the way to convert your 2D gachi directly into a 3D gachi, which is going to be cool. So you can take off wearables, equip wearables, and then hit a button and poof, you'll have your new 3D gachi avatar. And one thing I did want to add here as well, that and many people know this, but the one of the coolest parts of Avagachi is that your Avagachi's progress that you accrue in one game will follow over to another game like if you earn xp and you level up your gachi by playing gachi guardians and someone creates you know gachi kart a racing game your progress on chain is gonna share be shared with that game so that's that's one thing that i think is super cool about this whole ecosystem is that we're one shared avatar split and shared amongst all the different games out there I mean, it's going to take us a while to get all that right, and we don't want to rush into it and, you know, have a lot of abuse in the way people can level up in their game. So, you know, yeah, totally. there, there's going to be some nuances to what you just said, but definitely I think that's the dream at a high level. That's the, yeah, it's the dream. Yeah. Moving on we're to the next question, try to get us through this a little faster. At Stadari asks, where do you see value created by Gachi Guardians accruing? You've sort of answered that a little bit already. Will revenue generated be funneled to native assets, to Gachi Guardian specific in-game content, or to Pixel Craft? So yeah, first of all, I would say if we are able to create like a, a breakout game, then that's going to bring a ton of eyes to Avagachi and just more people falling in love with, with this IP, joining the community, getting involved in the DAO, getting involved in just like the day-to-day -day activities of, of the community. So that's going to be very positive for for our overall community as far as like in the future when there are in-app purchases or any kind of asset that's being bought in the game i'm sure there'll be some some forms of splits on those yeah and, and i think we we really want to avoid conflicting with the value of the existing assets like the wearables or the avagachis themselves right Dan? yeah anything we do in gotcha guardians should serve what we have right now not compete with it you know, totally yeah it. okay yep. before last question at the oliver spoon asks i'd like to know how pre-existing assets are going to play into traits slash balancing of gotcha guardians i think we both agreed on this really early on and that's traits should be like implemented in a game specific way but every game that's an avagachi protocol has to use totally. the traits into their gameplay some way 
the challenge will be that we don't want to create sort of this pay to win feeling with the with the trades or anything from the Avogadro. So we'll have to really, well, I mean, we have ideas there, but they're complex and we'll iron them out together as a community when we get a bit further. But how, how do we make trades matter, which I think we have some exciting ideas for, without it affecting the balance in a way where you either win or lose depending on the traits that you have. Yeah, yeah, I think, and each Avogachi has its traits. When you equip wearables, it increases your traits. So, yeah, I think there that's part of a gotcha game. You gotta you gotta include the traits and and balance it. Now there might be some trade offs for having certain very powerful traits and less powerful traits, but we'll be covering that in a future devlog for sure about for sure. all the different yeah, kind of tech that's, trees that's that you have. Be its own video at some point. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we're a little ways away from that. First, we really want to make a great, fun core experience, and that's our that's our priority right now. And final question for today: at Infozilla Two asks, will there be possibility to use Alchemica and gameplay of Gachi Guardians? Would love to hear on that topic. Dan, maybe you want to take this one. Yeah. So all of the like the crypto token integrations are definitely on the roadmap. There, but again want to emphasize that our our main goal here is to make a, a fun game and if we don't succeed at that then there won't be any any purpose in, in adding any you know alchemica or ghost sinks but it is definitely planned to have some use cases for alchemica sprinkled in throughout the gameplay all right well i mean dan i mean we went through so much today and this video is probably even longer than i originally wanted to but i, I hope it's been entertaining and you guys got a lot of valuable information and that you're a little yeah, bit more excited know. about gachi guardians than us and as dan saying uh, let us know in the comments if, if you have any thoughts on the video what you enjoyed what you'd like to see in like future devlogs and go ahead follow slama two flags on twitter as myself if you're not already following me code or dan with three n's and yeah, it's been, that's been really, really fun. So guys have a great evening, morning, wherever you are, whatever time you're in. And thanks a lot for listening to us and, and see you next time.